Today on Rapport. Team Pinoy and United Nationalist Alliance kick off the national campaigns for the 2013 elections. Performance and trust ratings of the country's top officials drop in the latest Pulse Asia survey. And North Korea conducts its third nuclear test. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. President Benigno Aquino's senatorial slate kicks off their campaign for the 2013 elections at Plaza Miranda. Natasha Gutierrez gives us the details on the Team Pinoy proclamation rally. As promised, Team Pinoy drew a clear line between his team and the opposition in their proclamation rally here today. The message was loud and clear. This is the president's team and nobody else. President Benigno Aquino III, in endorsing his candidates, took a swipe at the United Nationalist Alliance, questioning how they could be supportive of his reforms when they have candidates who used to be allied with the Arroyo government. In front of a jam-packed Plaza Miranda, the 12 candidates of Team Pinoy took turns speaking on stage about their platforms. But a common thread throughout it was a message in line with the team's strategy. Candidates vowed to continue the reforms made by Aquino. Several candidates like Lauren Lagarda and Jambi Madrigal even used up most of their six to eight minutes endorsing other candidates on the slate, emphasizing to voters that a 12-0 win in favor of Team Pinoy was essential for the nation's success. As expected, the president himself hammered home the message, saying it's clear that his 12 candidates, unlike others, have the people in mind and not themselves. He said those allied with the past government criticized the reforms he has accomplished so far and voting them would only be reverting to a rotten system. The mood was festive in Plaza Miranda with the candidates all in a good mood and the crowd equally happy to see their candidates. Although there was a minor accident, Occidental Mendora Vice Governor Mario Jean Mendiola fell off the stage and was bleeding from his head. He was rushed to the hospital. The president stayed with Mendiola until the ambulance came. He is supposedly okay except for a four-inch laceration on his head and some minor back pains. Aside from that, candidates said the event was a huge success to them and they've also expressed excitement over the campaign period. Tomorrow, Team Pinoy will be in Batangas, followed by Laguna on Thursday and Cavite to wrap off the week. Natasha Gutierrez, Rappler, Plaza Miranda. Rappler's Patricia Evangelista follows Bayan Muna Representative Teddy Casino in his bid to run for the Senate. She files this video blog. Pagamat walang kasing laking makinarya ng mga traditional na politiko, ay eh kasama naman natin ang sambayanan. So hindi tayo nangangamba. At ito po ay tatratuhin natin na parang isang triathlon. Talagang paghihirapan natin, pagsisipagan natin. Pero yan ang kinakailangan para magkaroon ng tunay na pagbabago sa ating bansa. We're here at the proclamation rally of Bayan Muna Party List Representative Teddy Casino. The left-wing senatorial aspirant who claims he is an alternative to what he calls a monopoly of elitists. Ito po ang target natin na dalhin ang boses ng karaniwang Pilipino sa loob ng Senado. He may be a long way from the Magic 12, but he's willing to run literally to the Philippine Senate on the same day that coalition candidates across the country are launching their campaigns and grand proclamations. Hindi naman tayo naniniwala na mananalo ka sa pamamagitan ng hakot at mga bayad na audience. Imbis na ang tao ang tatawagin natin para pumunta sa ating rally, tayo po ang pupunta sa taong bayan, sa mga palengke, sa mga plaza, sa mga eskwelahan, sa mga komunidad. Magpapaliwanag tayo mga Teddy Casino claims that he can hear the voice of the people. But to win an election, hearing the people's voice may not matter so much as getting the people to hear his. Pat Evangelista, Rappler, Manila. 
Pulse Asia's January pre-election survey shows a significant decline in performance and trust ratings of the country's top five officials. President Benigno Aquino, Vice President Jejomar Binay, Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile, House Speaker Feliciano Belmonte Jr., and Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno all suffer double-digit declines in their overall performance rating between November 2012 and January 2013. Enrile suffers the biggest drop in approval ratings, dropping 27 percentage points from 73% in November to 46% in January. His disapproval ratings rise from 5% to 16%, an 11 percentage point increase. Despite their significant drops, Aquino and Binay are the top two officials still enjoying majority, majority approval ratings. Aquino suffers a 12 percentage point drop from 78% approval rating in November to 66% in January. His disapproval rating remains unchanged at 6%. Binay's approval ratings also decline from 82% to 69%, while his disapproval ratings rose slightly from 3% to 5%. Belmonte's approval ratings dropped 18 percentage points from 46% to 28%, while Serenos dropped 14 points from 38% to 24%. Like the performance ratings, only Aquino and Binay get majority trust ratings in the survey, with Aquino getting 68% and Binay 71%. Enrile gets the biggest trust rating change, dropping 21 percentage points from 67% to 46%. Well, the television ads used to make or break a candidate, but in this age of social media, are they as effective? Carmela Fonbuena reports. It's the season for political ads once again, where candidates sell themselves to Filipino voters like they are bottles of shampoo. We see the same tried and tested formula. Popular relatives. Si Tito Ninoy, Tita Cory. Slogans. Use your cocote. And catchy singles. The past four national elections since Congress lifted the political ad ban in 2001 shows how political ads can make a senator. The biggest success story so far is Mr. Palenque, Mr. Palenque a strategy that helped catapult a relatively unknown senatorial bet, Mar Rojas, to the top spot on election day. But relatives, slogans, and jingles are not enough to make a winning political ad like Mr. Palenque. There's an entire science behind making TV viewers like the ad and vote for the candidate, making children dance to it, or making voters sing to it. So far, none of the ads today have captured the voters the way Mr. Palenque did in the 2004 senatorial elections. Is it too early to tell? Or have voters' tastes changed? Carmela Fonbuena, Rappler, Manila. As the campaign period for the 2013 national elections begins, political analysts and voters wonder, can social media deliver a win? The answer to that question, at least in the Philippines now, remains unclear. In the United States, social media played a huge role in the campaigns of Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. Both parties saw the potential of social media to sway voters. Will the candidates of the 2013 midterm elections in the Philippines take the same social media path? The Rappler's social media team checked their accounts last night, and here's what we found. Senator Chis Escudero tops Twitter with more than 100,000 followers. He's followed by other former and current politicians and a political newbie. At number two is former Akbayan Representative Risa Ontiveros, followed by San Juan Representative J.V. Ejercito, Aurora Representative Sunny Angara, Senator Loren Lagarda, Senator Antonio Trillanes, Bayan Muna Representative Teddy Casino, former presidential contender Eddie Villanueva, and resigned Senator Miguel Migs Zubiri. On Facebook, Eddie Villanueva tops the list with more than 130,000 likes, friends, and followers. He's followed by the Red Cross Chair Richard Gordon, Bam Aquino, J.V. Ejercito, Chis Escudero, Risa Ontiveros, Teddy Casino, Puerto Princesa Mayor Ed Hagerdorn, Mig Zubiri, and Una Senate bet Mitos Magsaysay. In 2012, social media campaigning expert Cynthia Cook says, while social media can't assure a win in real life, ignoring its potential can be disastrous. She says engagement is key. Not all of the Senate bets have been consistently active on social media, and their numbers show that. Incumbent Senator Gringo Anasan, who joined Twitter after the 2010 elections, failed to make it to our list. His account doesn't have any updates between December 2011 and May 2012. 
Only three candidates who topped our Facebook and Twitter list also make it to Pulse Asia's latest senatorial preference survey. Ratings leader Chis Escudero, J.V. Ejercito, and Mig Subiri. Will those likes and follows translate into votes? Well, we'll find out soon.